Hi, I'm Dr. Nadeem Anwar on the UC Health liver transplant team. And I'm here to talk about rejection, how it's diagnosed, discuss common symptoms, and give you advice on how to decrease your risk for rejection after your transplant. So, what is rejection? Your body's immune system is designed to seek and destroy any foreign objects that it finds in your body, like a cold virus or a flu virus, and even a transplanted organ. The process of destroying the foreign object, which is your transplanted organ, is called rejection. It is very common for your body's immune system to try and reject the liver within the first three to six months after transplant. Many patients experience at least one mild to moderate rejection episode during this early period, but rejection can happen at any time. How does rejection happen? The rejection occurs as your body's immune system responds to the presence of the transplanted liver. The rejection actually shows that your immune system is working. However, in transplant recipients, this immune system needs to be suppressed to protect the transplanted liver so that it is not rejected. Rejection can be acute, meaning that it develops quickly as your immune system attempts to destroy the liver cells. If the rejection process is not completely resolved and continues slowly over time, it is called chronic rejection. Chronic rejection can be more difficult to treat because of more permanent changes in the liver tissue. How do you know you are rejecting your liver? Any injury to the liver can cause a release of liver enzymes into your bloodstream. An injury to this liver cells could be caused by rejection, infection, or side effect of medications. Measuring the liver function test regularly and watching the pattern of the results can help your transplant team decide what is happening to your liver. Liver rejection is usually diagnosed by looking at your liver function tests. Your doctor may suspect that you have a rejection if any of the numbers are increased from the normal range. After your transplant, it is important to remember that some abnormal labs may be acceptable as you recover from the transplant or related complications and should improve over time and others may indicate rejection and require treatment. All the liver function test results may help diagnose rejection. A liver biopsy confirms that the liver is being rejected. During a liver biopsy, a small piece of the liver tissue is examined under a microscope for signs of rejection. The biopsy procedure is often done as a short stay admission at the hospital but can also be done in an outpatient setting. If you do need a liver biopsy, know that most patients feel fine after the procedure, but also that sometimes the biopsy site may be a little tender, like a bruise for a day or two. Once your results are available, the transplant team will determine if the treatment is necessary and further discuss this matter with you. Do you know the common symptoms of rejection after a transplant? The most common early symptoms include Fever greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, flu-like symptoms such as chills, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, headaches, dizziness, body aches, and tiredness, and abdominal pain or tenderness. If you have any of these symptoms, additional liver functions may be obtained to monitor for rejection. Additionally, your doctor may want you to have a liver biopsy to confirm that your symptoms are caused by rejection. Please know that it's extremely important to mention these symptoms to your doctor. If you don't, rejection and your symptoms will worsen over time. Later symptoms may be similar to problems you've had before your liver transplant and may include yellowing of the skin and eyes, which is called jaundice, dark tea-colored urine, light clay-colored stools, episodes of confusion, increased fatigue, abdominal swelling, and fluid called ascites. Rejection does not mean that you will lose your liver, but early diagnosis and treatment are very important to avoid complications. Mild to moderate rejection is treated by increasing immunosuppression. So, what exactly is immunosuppression? It simply means suppression of immunity with drugs, usually to prevent rejection of an organ transplant. Immunosuppression typically allows the recipient to accept the organ permanently with no unpleasant side effects. In some cases, the amount and or frequency of your anti-rejection medications are usually increased. If you are taking prednisone, the dose may be increased. But if you're not, 
it may be prescribed for a few weeks to treat the rejection. Sometimes the IV form of prednisone is given for several days to treat rejection that does not resolve with oral prednisone. Another way to treat rejection is by adding or combining other anti-rejection medications. For severe rejection, other agents that are more strongly affecting the immune system are used, such as thymoglobulin. The medication is given by intravenous IV in the hospital and patients are monitored closely to be sure that the rejection is resolving. As rejection resolves and your liver recovers, the amount of your primary anti-rejection medications you were taking prior to the rejection episode may be increased, decreased, or changed to prevent further episodes. Your transplant team's goal is to have you on the lowest amount of immunosuppression possible so that you do not reject your liver and have good liver function long term. Taking good care of yourself, taking your medications as prescribed, and having your blood test done as requested will help decrease your risk of rejection. Good communication with your transplant team and following your care routine are key factors for a successful outcome after a liver transplant. To decrease your risk for rejection and to monitor symptoms of rejection, you should know and understand the signs and symptoms of liver rejection, take all your medications as prescribed, make sure you always have a supply of your medications, stay in regular contact with your transplant coordinator or transplant team for any changes in your immunosuppression, have your blood testing done as instructed, follow up on your blood test results with your transplant coordinator, Call your transplant coordinator or your physician if you think you're experiencing any symptoms of rejection. Avoid alcohol, recreational and illegal drugs in any herbal remedies or supplements. Understanding rejection, how it's diagnosed, and the common symptoms will help reduce your risk of rejection after your transplant. We hope this video provided you with all the information you need about rejection, answered any questions you have, and helps you during your recovery. If you have any further questions, please contact the transplant department.